Uh, it's a great honor to be at EuroPython. This is my uh, definitely my favorite uh, uh, Python, and in general, uh, my favorite conference. And I hope uh, you have fun today in my presentation, and you learn something about some weird neural network models that we are going to to cover. Okay, so uh, first of all, a short uh, introduction. My name is uh, Nemanja. I come from Serbia, I'm from University of Novi Sad. Novi Sad is the second largest uh, city in Serbia, where I uh, am a PhD student in my third year, and I'm also teaching assistant there. Uh, at the Faculty of uh, Natural Sciences or Faculty of Sciences. Okay, so my research topic is uh, neural network robustness, which is, has been sort of a hot topic uh, recently. Uh, basically, uh, I'm trying to make uh, neural network models that we have today more robust or uh, uh, less prone to error in difficult situations or uh, when someone is actually trying to make our models go uh, go wrong. Uh, you can find me on, the, on these... Uh, on these addresses, this is my email. I also have a blog where I write occasionally about some fun machine learning related stuff. I recently wrote an article. Is, is there anyone from Google here? Okay, then I can talk about it, I guess. I wrote an article how you can uh, SSH into Google Collab notebooks and uh, use SSH if you don't want to use the Jupyter notebooks. I guess that's not breaking their uh, uh, terms of service, but if they are, well, I'm glad they're not here, okay. Uh, you can also find me on GitHub. I have a uh, uh, lots of projects there. You can uh, look at them, side projects, you know, some games and things like that. So on most social media, you can find me at uh, this handle, uh, which is uh, eight letters because when I was making my first email, that was the limit. So it's, it kind of uh, stuck. Okay, so this presentation, just to go briefly over it, uh, I'm giving you a chance to, you know, run away if you don't like it. So uh, it's going to be about this very weird and uh, uh, unreasonably, let's say, uh, uh, working, because I cannot explain the exact reason why it's working, a neural network model, uh, which has to do with something uh, about uh, classification based on missing features. So we will talk about image classification in general, but it can be used in uh, any convolutional uh, model. Uh, what it tries to do is to mimic something we all uh, do every day, which is deduction, which uh, other neural network models uh, uh, don't know how to do still. So when I say deduction, I simply mean, okay, so if you know what all the possible values are and you know what something isn't, you can deduct what it is. Okay, so that's what we're trying to do here. Uh, it helps in certain scenarios, so uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about occlusion. Uh, so when an uh, object you're classifying is behind, for example, another object which you're not interested in. And I'm, the general uh, way this presentation is going to go, I'm going to talk about some uh, implementation details, then show you some code and things like that. Okay, so the full source, source code is available, uh, but more on, about that uh, later. Okay, another word of warning. This is all very uh, experimental, and uh, I cannot uh, claim with certainty that all you, that I'm... Uh, telling you is true. It's, uh, tr uh, it's true by, uh, to the best of my knowledge. Uh, we sent a, pr a proof of concept uh, academic paper to this uh, neural network world journal, which is on University of Prague, and I'm looking forward to uh, their comments. Uh, uh, this uh, uh, academic journal that specifies in weird, let's say, neural network uh, models, among other things. I'm also looking forward to your comments, so you can say, you know, this doesn't make sense at all, and I will agree with you. Uh, and of course you know that machine learning, okay, some machine learning models, especially deep learning, deep neural network models, are very hard to interpret. So they may work, but we don't know why. And this is the case today. Okay, so what I'm basically uh, saying is don't believe me and question everything I, I say. I'm looking forward to your uh, comments. It would mean a lot. Okay, so let's just go briefly, if you are not that familiar with uh, convolutional neural networks, how they work. Uh, when you work with neural networks, they uh, sort of become very simple uh, because when you uh, understand how they work, they are really not that complicated, okay? So if we look at the picture on the bottom of the slide, you can see several layers in a convolutional neural network where the first couple of layers are these layers called convolutional layers. So convolutional layers co or convolutions in general, operation of convolution, is not complicated, in, not related only to deep learning on neural networks in general. So convolution layers and convolution operations on images have been around for some time now. You can use them, for example, for edge detection on images. 
But what made them, you know, really uh, uh, work well with uh, uh, neural network models is that uh, before neural network models or, you know, the, all, the whole neural network uh, uh, thing exploded, let's say, uh, a couple of years uh, b before, uh, you had to handcraft or hand make these uh, convolutional filters or kernels. So convolutions uh, as operations uh, work as you can see on the uh, image of the of the dog. There is this uh, small squares. Okay, so these are called convolutional uh, kernels or, fi or filters. And uh, convolutional operator uh, conv operation of convolution is basically taking this filter, sliding it over the image, and looking for matches, for example, just multiplying some matrices, basically. So before neural networks, you had to you know, make your own filters, but with neural networks, you can learn these uh, features. So in these uh, filters or kernels, whatever you want to call them, there are some low-level and high-level features of images that we are classifying. Okay, so basically, in convolutional neural networks, you're using these convolutional layers uh, for extracting features from an image. Okay, so for example, on, of image, on images of dogs, you can say that uh, features on these images are, you know, if it has ears, if it has eyes, if it has a waggly tail, for example, then it's a, you can say it's a dog. So th these are some high level features, for example. After these convolutional layers come the fully connected layers, which are the traditional, let's say, neural network layers, which, are, which contain the weight and biases for actually training your classifi uh, cl uh, uh, classification uh, algorithm. So to sum it up, you use features from an image to classify it. Okay, so you can say if something you know, has eyes, ears, and a waggly tail, then you can say it's a dog and not a cat, because cats don't have waggly tails, most of them. Okay, so what about missing feature classification? So my idea was with this, uh, with this neural network model and algorithm, uh, what, try, what happens if we try to uh, classify something based on the features that are not in the image, okay? So instead of saying, you know, uh, a dog is what, what we said before, you know, uh, with some features, you can say, okay, dog doesn't have headlights if you're classifying also cars, okay? So here is a motivational example from the MNIST data set. You probably heard it. It's a, a, a data set of handwritten digits. Okay, so we have a digit five here and two very high level features. We have one uh, uh, circle-like feature and one like corner line feature that goes to the left and then to, uh, from left to the right and then to the bottom. Now imagine if you couldn't see the five and I tell you we are classifying an image of a digit and I'm 100% sure it doesn't have these two features, okay? So it doesn't have a circle-like feature and it doesn't have a corner line feature. So because it doesn't have a, a, a circle-like feature, we can safely assume it's not a zero because zero is a circle, basically. We can also say that it's not a six, eight, or a nine because these are the digits that have uh, the circle-like feature, okay? We can also say it's not, it's uh, written on the slide, one, two, three, four, or seven, because they, the, all of these uh, uh, digits have this corner-like, corner-line feature. So what we're left with is that we are looking at number five, even though we didn't use the features of the digit five to classify it, okay? This is the main point, so if, if there are some questions, please, uh, okay, all clear here? Awesome. Okay, so now, why would you do this? I mean, if you know uh, that what features are of the, of the uh, image file, why would you go the other way around, okay? So the main uh, 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 reason, and go going back to, to adversarial learn learning and occlusion, what happens if we have partial inputs? For example, you know, a digit in our uh, example is damaged somehow, or the half of, half of the pixels are missing, or one part of the image is corrupted somehow, or blurry, or things like that. So I, the classifier that I'm going to show you that works with uh, missing features works much better, well, much better. It works better on, uh, 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 on these damaged images than the classic neural network classifier, okay? So how do we implement this? Well, mostly we went through already how you can implement it, but we're going, we are going to go uh, more in depth. So we are going to implement this with uh, 
negating or inversing the output of the last convolutional layer. Okay, so at that point in the network, we are getting all the features and their positions in an image. So if we inverse that, what features are there and what features are not there, we get what features are missing and where are they missing. Okay? We'll go more into detail. So, we have several steps. We will need to extract the features from the images somehow to, you know, be, be, to know what images are there and uh, what, uh, what uh, sorry, what features are there and what features are not. Uh, during the, the neural network training, we take one digit in our example with a MNIST data set. We push it through the, to the convolutional layers. We get what features are there in the image and immediately we can deduct from that what features are not there in the image. Okay, so the feature set is a finite set. Set Okay, so it has a number of elements, and if you know what elements are there, you can immediately know what elements are not there. It's very easy. Uh, after we inverse or negate this vector, we'll talk about what we need to do. We can uh, train the, the rest of the image normally. Okay, so let's go through the steps. Uh, the first step to, to get the features, we can handcraft these features, you know, just draw them, but that's difficult, boring, because you know when you change the data set, you have to do it all over again. What we can do and what my algorithm is doing is uh, simply training the network normally for number of epochs, let's say 10, and then just taking the uh, weights from the convolutional layers. Very simple, so it's basically transfer learning, okay? So you're just taking a snapshot from your, from your model and applying it to your new model, which you change somehow. It's automatic, so you don't have to do the boring stuff, and much faster and easier. Okay, so for the step two, we need to talk a little bit about activation functions. If you are familiar with neural networks, I'm guessing you are. So activations function, activation functions are what you apply to your activation of a neuron, which is the sum of all the weights and the biases. Uh, and we need to be careful here because we want to inverse or negate the, the output of the last convolutional layer. So we need to uh, be aware of what activation function we are using in that in that layer. So the uh, the transformation of this feature uh, positional vector that we are using will depend largely on the uh, last activation function in our last convolutional layer. So simple example, if we have a sigmoid function, sigmoid function outputs a number between zero and one. We can say zero are uh, zero means the feature is not there, and the one means the feature is there, okay? So if we want to inverse or negate this vector, we simply apply this formula for each element in the vector, we just say one minus x. So if a feature was present and the value was one, it will become zero and vice versa. Very simple. And that's really nice, but it's 2019, and we shouldn't be using sigmoids in our, uh, in our neural network model anymore, models anymore. So. What if we want to use uh, the popular choice, which is the rectified linear unit, or ILU? Uh, you need to be aware, and I'm you know, uh, speaking from experience, because this was one of the, the one of, let's say, not bugs, but you know, one of the gotchas in implementing this model. Uh, uh, ReLU activation function, or its output, is difficult to negate because it can go to infinity. So you cannot just say one minus something, okay? It's very... Uh, uh, difficult to know where is the upper bound, okay? So there are some solutions. So if you're using PyTorch, uh, there is, a, a, let's say, a hard upper limit version of a ReLU function. I don't know if you heard about it. It's called ReLU6. It basically goes to just not from uh, uh, zero to infinity, but just from zero to six. So you can just say, okay, when I get this vector, I can just say six minus x, and then I will get the, the missing features. Don't ask me why it goes to six. I'm not really sure why it goes to six, but it goes to six. I actually implemented my own version. It just goes to one, but it works largely the same. You can use leaky ReLU. You can use the new activation function switch. They, this could work. Uh, based, on the, based on looking at the graph, how the function looks, uh, I haven't tried it, so you know, if you try it, let me know if it works. You can use uh, the, the tangent, the hyperbolic tangent function, uh, but beware also with it, uh, it goes from minus one to one, so the, uh, the formula will be a little bit different. It, it won't be one minus x, it will be just minus x. So you know, if it, if it was minus one, it will become one, and if it was one, it will become minus one. It's very difficult to make activation, activation, function, uh, activation functions uh, exciting, but sorry, you have to bear with me, okay? Uh, so 
let's see some code. Okay, so this is the negative learning uh, network implemented in PyTorch. In PyTorch, it's very uh, easy to make uh, weird neural network models because you have full control over what happens. You basically write a function of the forward pass through the network. And now you can see in the first uh, uh, two lines, we have some, just some normal convolutional max pooling layers with some dropout, nothing too spectacular. In the third row, you see the x dot view. We uh, flatten the, the vector, so we have 320 features or 320 positional features so because the positions are important. And then you simply, in your uh, class that you uh, uh, implemented, I, I, in, actually in my class I have this net type uh, field and if it's set to negative, I just negate the vector. If it's set to negative ReLU, I do one minus X, uh, which we talked about in the previous slide. Okay, so the, the interesting thing about, just going back for just one second, uh, if you try to negate the real activation function with m one minus x formula, even though it shouldn't work, it will work. Because, okay, so th this was, as I said, one of the gotchas, because it goes from zero to infinity, okay? So if it's zero, it means that the feature is not there. So when you do one minus zero, it's one, so the feature is there. But when you do something, some large number, I don't know, thousand, so you do one minus thousand, it's minus 999. And because I had some ReLU activation functions after the convolutional layer, it just, you know, because ReLU ignores all the negative values, it just worked. So you can probably get away with, you know, running it. So this code will work even though it shouldn't work. Okay. So. You can see if the uh, if the if we are using the the net type negative relu, we just uh, use the function ones like x, which basically makes the, a tensor of the same dim uh, dimension uh, uh, of x, which we, with all ones in it, and we just add a negative uh, of that vector, which is basically the same as doing one minus x. Okay, and then the rest of the network is completely completely normal. Okay. So we covered two steps. So we got the features, and we now, uh, not, uh, now know how to extract the missing features from an image. Okay. So it's almost ready to be trained, but we have, a, let's say, a little issue. It's actually a big issue. But when we uh, modified our, uh, our forward pass through the network with activating the negation part, uh, we uh, uh, we didn't want to do this, but we also affected the convolutional layers during training. Okay, so remember, we have pre-trained uh, convolutional layers, and now we are seeing some really weird patterns, and because convolutional layers are also learned as a part of training the neural network, they will get all the filters and it will get corrupted. Okay, so it won't longer be the features from the digits data set or whatever data set we're using, uh, the, the negation of the, of the neural network will affect these convolutional layers in a very weird way. I don't have a visualization uh, at hand, but it looked like junk, basically. It didn't look like features from the image anymore. Uh, simple solution, you can freeze the convolutional layers. It's very simple in PyTorch. When you freeze them, they won't uh, no longer be modified during training. You just use them as they are. Uh, optionally, we can also, uh, the, uh, the other layers, which are going to contain all the, the weights for the negative network, uh, we can reset them. It's an optional step, but it helps with uh, convergence. So if you don't reset them, the network will still achieve the uh, same accuracy, but in a larger number of epochs. So it's just an optional thing to do, which helps a little bit. Here is the code. So the first uh, two lines beneath the comment, you can see we are re reinitializing the fully connected layers. The hidden doesn't mean I'm hiding something from you. It's, I think, 50. It's just a constant. Uh, Freeze convolutional layers uh, part is also simple. You just go into your model to, uh, through your convolutional layers. We have only two here, con1 and con2. And we just say the weight uh, of it or the, uh, all, the, all the features don't require gradation, so autograd won't, won't mess with them. We need to reinitialize on, uh, also another gotcha, ask me how I know, is you need to reinitialize the optimizer if you're uh, changing your layers. So, you know, you have to, it, it will still attempt to modify them and throw an error if, uh, if you don't do this step. Okay, so, we have completed our, uh, our, 
uh, our model. Now we need to test it out. And for testing, uh, we introduced this, uh, we called it PMNIST or partial NIST dataset, which is very simple. So in the original dataset, NIST uh, had uh, 60,000 training samples. We didn't mess with these. And we also had 10,000, I think, uh, validation sample, test samples. So we just, uh, you know, extended it a little bit with these 10,000 uh, validation set images. We introduced new 40,000 images in a very simple way, just to test it out. We have this, uh, you can see on the image on the bottom, so on the, uh, all the way to the left is the complete validation set image. Then we have something that we are calling, uh, I think this is, uh, we, uh, we call this vertical cut, so because the, uh, vertically the 50% of the image is missing, then we have horizontal cut, which is the left side of the image is missing. We have diagonal cut because we're running out of ideas. So you just cut, you know, some squares from the image. And we also have this, we call it triple cut because we just remove three small squares from the image. So very simple to, to, uh, to make. Uh, just some additional remark, Wait, time, okay. Uh, it would be probably easier to just train on partial samples, okay? So if you want a new neural network which can classify halves of images, you, you just train your networks on half of images. But we want to, you know, this is just, a, uh, let's say, proof of concept. We, we want uh, to, to, to emphasize that, you know, you're, you are not going to always uh, have these uh, uh, easy, easy ways to get to the partial uh, in input sets. For example, think of traffic signs. So you want to classify traffic signs, and what if a tree is in front of the traffic sign? Okay, so you have a, you can also have, you only have a partial view of it. A human will, you know, see, okay, it's not red, so it's probably not a stop sign, or, you know, th things like that, and it will be immediately able to tell not to stop. So we're trying to mimic this. Uh, another remark is that on the unmodified validation set, we still have, uh, top accuracy, let's say, great accuracy, uh, just as much or even a little bit more than the, than the traditional model. So this method doesn't break your network when the input is still uh, one piece or whole. Okay, so it only helps with the partial inputs. It helps a little bit with the whole inputs. Uh, and PyTorch makes implementing weird models really a, a, a treat. If you're not using PyTorch, you should really try it. There is a talk, I think, about TensorFlow 2.0, which has some of the new uh, dynamic uh, function, functional features. Later on, I think after this one, I'm going to go to that one. Okay. Okay, so some results. Uh, so when you train this model, it's not, not a very big network. It's basically uh, just the example network from the, as a baseline from the PyTorch uh, repository. So not a huge network. I think it has four layers. Uh, so these are, these are the results. So uh, you can see we have our five validation data sets. We have our accuracies. And in the column delta, uh, delta is how uh, our model improved upon the original model. Okay. So on the unmodified uh, validation set, uh, our model improved just a little bit, some 0.31%. But you can see on all of the other, uh, uh, let's say, partial inputs, uh, we have some some improvements and with a very simple modification which you can do very easily um, we can see that the, the the vertical cut for some reason i it's very difficult to interpret what's what's going on but for some reason for the vertical cut we are seeing nine percent which is a, a big in increase we have ten thousand images so nine point zero five percent means that our new network can now classify nine nine hundred and five images more compared to the previous network Okay, just briefly to go over the, the, the future work, we want to try this on the different, oh, sorry? Just on your numbers there, mm -hmm. uh, the previous, on the unmodified, the 0.3 is actually quite good when you look at... The yes, but it's not, this model is not state-of-the-art model, okay, no, so... I get it, but I mean, it's a good improvement. Yeah, yeah, it's a good, it's, uh, you know, but it's smaller than the rest, so... Yeah, but there, there's not so much left to improve. Yes, yes, of course, yes, that's, that's, the, that's the point. Uh, we already experimented with uh, CIFAR datasets, so CIFAR 10 and CIFAR 100. We are seeing similar results there. And we want to try different architectures. I can tell you now that uh, deeper models, which have high level, uh, higher level features, so more convolutional layers, yields with better results. So the, the higher the, the, 
the, the level of the features, the better results for negative classification we, we can get. We want to try under silent networks. We already tried a little bit uh, to play with a deep full neural network, which can you know, modify the inputs based on the output of your neural network. We want to see how it affects uh, our network. And you can find on this very easy to remember link, you can find the complete uh, PyTorch implementation, which is basically the same implementation from the paper we sent. Okay, so five minutes early. Thank you so much for your attention. I hope you had fun. Okay. Thank you, Nemanja. So, any questions? Don't be shy. Okay. So, yeah, that was a very interesting talk. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Uh, yeah, one, one thing that kind of struck me is that it's, it's quite similar to the idea of, you know, the 20 questions approach of figuring something out. Like, oh, yes, it, yes. yes. The, you mean the game? Not, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is there any way to kind of try to use that methodology to kind of... That's a really good idea. Yeah, yes. Because maybe that would like it. Yes, thank you. Yes, that's a very good idea. We can try that, yes. That's yeah. the principle of deduction, okay? So it, it would probably work really well here, if you can model it somehow, but thank you, yeah. That's a great suggestion. Okay, anyone else? Don't be shy. <laughs> okay, so then I guess, thank you again. Thank you.